have you taken an antibiotic during pregnancy or labor? What about an antibiotic while you're breastfeeding? Did you have a C-section birth? Are you formula feeding your baby? If you can answer yes to any of those questions I just asked, you have to watch this video. What's up? Friends, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I am Marissa, mom and founder of Noble Baby Wellness, where I focus and specialize on everything that has to do with infant's digestive wellness. So this is a very important video if you have answered yes to any of those questions. And even if you haven't said yes, I strongly advise any moms watching this video to continue watching because you're gonna wanna hear this information. Did you know that an infant's immune system is cultivated, meaning it is created and stimulated at birth, this is the first time their immune system has this opportunity to work and strengthen and move those muscles. This is how a baby is supposed to be born. They're supposed to travel through the vaginal canal. Once a baby travels through the vaginal canal, there are a ton of amazing, beneficial, good bacteria chilling out in the vaginal canal and it's there to not only protect the vagina and the pH of the vagina, but it's also to help support a baby when birthing is happening. So when a baby goes through the vaginal canal, they meet all these awesome bacteria and these bacteria end up going in their eyes, which help protect the eyes as like a mucus layer protects the eyes and it goes into the mouth and it goes all over their skin and it's just a protective barrier to support them and it's part of their immune system. So once that bacteria from the vaginal canal ends up going into their mouth, it starts going down, down, down into their large intestine where it lives there and it creates their microbiome. A microbiome is where these bacteria live. This is kind of like their home, their habitat, and they live there and they cultivate there and they support our body and support our health and well, specifically our infant health. Not only do babies meet these awesome good bacteria in the vagina, but they also meet not so friendly, insidious bacteria that are coming from the anus. Well, because the vagina and the anus are so close, they're literally hand in hand. So babies are obviously going to meet some bacteria like E. coli. And when this happens, the good bacteria and the bad bacteria are meeting and this also kicks off the immune system because it's kind of like, okay, these bacteria don't seem like they're okay. They kind of seem harmful and we have to do something. So that's when the good bacteria, which is contributing to the immune system, goes after the bad bacteria and they kind of do, you know, their little mingle and fight or whatever they do. And that is the first opportunity the immune system has started. So I also want to tell you that a newborn baby is completely sterile sterile not stereo sterile i don't know what the heck i'm talking about they're sterile meaning that they have no bacteria their bodies have never ever come into contact with any type of bacteria hasn't even really functioned on its own because while well, mom was doing everything for the whole nine months or however long mom was pregnant for and mom was doing all that work so babies are completely sterile at this point until they go through the vaginal canal they meet the good bacteria and the not so good bacteria like i just mentioned this is the first time the immune system gets its hands dirty so to sort of speak or i don't even know the saying for that but 70 percent of the immune system lives in your gut and that's crazy when you think of it because everybody assumes the immune system is well the immune system is functioning throughout the body but However, a large part of our immune system and the function of the immune system comes from our gut and our digestive system. And specifically our friendly bugs that support us are part of the immune system. So this process of a vaginal birth is extremely important to inoculate your infant with good bacteria, good bugs. So this is how it's supposed to be. Baby is breastfed, and when mom is breastfeeding baby, baby is coming into contact with the bacteria on her breasts, on her areola, on her nipple, and they are being introduced to more bacteria because we have a ton of bacteria living on our skin, and that bacteria, some of it's good, some of it's not good, but babies are interacting with that bacteria once again. 
and not to mention that the sugar in mom's milk which is called oligo oligo oligosaccharides oligosaccharides these types of sugars are fantastic because you know what they do they feed our bacteria they feed the baby's bacteria so this is food and fuel for our good bacteria to help them thrive to support them to help them flourish so they can be there and support us and support our body and our digestion this is what exactly is supposed to happen and i put a huge emphasis on supposed because that is how the bodies are created that's how women's bodies are created that's how us as women are supposed to support our infant that we have just birthed we have everything that we literally need from our own bodies to give to our infant to support their health their immune system their digestion everything we have it all we are all so capable and it's so amazing how amazing women's bodies are mother's bodies are it blows my mind sometimes but this is how it's supposed to be but unfortunately it's not always like that it's not always the plan sometimes c-sections have to be done sometimes there's an emergency c-section that can't be avoided sometimes doctors push moms to do c-sections sometimes moms opt to do c-sections because sometimes they assume that it may be easier for them and sometimes moms struggle with breastfeeding. I can speak to that because I had a very hard time with breastfeeding, a very, very hard time. And I had to formula feed my son, which was not what my plan was, but it is what it is. And sometimes mom needs to take antibiotics to fight an infection, to fight some type of bacteria that's harming and invading her body. And when that happens, baby gets that antibiotic too. So. Are you ready to learn more about why your baby may need probiotics? All right, keep watching. Antibiotics during pregnancy. So antibiotics are not selective, meaning they go after not only the bad bacteria, but they also go after the good bacteria, which is the bacteria in our guts, which is our immune system, part of our immune system, 70%. That's a big, 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 big portion. So when we take antibiotics, when we're pregnant, when we're in labor, when we're giving birth, those antibiotics kill off our bacteria. So it kills off mom's bacteria, but it also kills off the bacteria that the baby's gonna be coming into contact with. So they're not gonna be able to have that opportunity of cultivating their immune system through the vaginal canal because, well, that bacteria is dead now, it's gone. And they're not gonna get that opportunity to get their immune system fighting and working. This also affects their digestion because probiotics and good bacteria are living in our digestive system that help with us breaking down foods to create vitamins and minerals. So now, if you really think of it, mom's completely sterile and now baby's completely sterile. So mom doesn't have that opportunity to give that bacteria or share that bacteria with her baby. So if this is the case, mom has taken antibiotics during pregnancy, birth or labor mom needs to take probiotics right the second like literally like pause this video and go buy some probiotics because you are not going to have that opportunity mom's not going to have that opportunity to support her baby with these amazing bacteria that she could give to them so taking a probiotic asap is what i strongly recommend for mom to do because once she replenishes her own bacteria she can replenish or plenish, share, whatever word you wanna throw in there with her baby. Antibiotics during breastfeeding. So mom has given a vaginal birth, maybe, and she is feeding her baby with her breast milk, which is fantastic, but mom has an infection and mom has to take an antibiotic. So what does mom do? She has to get the antibiotic. And she takes the antibiotic and well, it passes through her breast milk. And when it passes through her breast milk, it goes into her baby and her baby becomes sterile too. They don't have any more um, good bacteria or bad bacteria. So mom and baby are now both sterile. And when it comes to this, mom should be taking probiotic while she's doing the antibiotic, not together, but antibiotic whenever the doctor tells you to take it. And then four, five, six hours later, take your probiotic. 
And along with that, mom should be supplementing baby with probiotic too. You can do oral probiotics for baby. You can drip it onto your nipple or directly into their mouth. So this is a really good and important way to get that bacteria back into mom's body and into baby's body. Mama has a C-section and C-section environments are completely sterile. There is no good bacteria. There is no bad bacteria. It is just sterile baby sterile mom's probably gonna have to take an antibiotic as well because well she could be more susceptible to infections because she is having a c-section so mom is gonna be sterile now too and if mom is going to go and breastfeed her baby mom has no opportunity to actually inoculate her baby with good bacteria and the bad bacteria to get their immune system going their digestive system going so if that's the case, mom should be also taking a probiotic when she has a C-section, sorry, after she has a C-section away from the antibiotics and baby should be getting a probiotic too. Formula fed babes. Well, I wish I knew this before I had my baby, my son. I really wish I knew because, well, I could have saved a lot of headache if I knew that I had to give him a probiotic especially when he's being formula fed because listen to this formula is already really really hard for a baby to digest because their digestive systems have never ever come into contact with anything at this point so mom gives birth either vaginal or c-section baby's digestive system has no clue what to do because it was relying on mom for nine months or however long mom was pregnant for to do everything for them. So they have never ever come into contact with milk, soy, high fructose corn syrup, which nobody in the entire world should be coming into contact with high fructose corn syrup because it is so, 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 so toxic. And if you guys wanna learn more about high fructose corn syrup or corn syrup in general, I'm gonna link a bunch of awesome research articles down in the description box because you have to most definitely if you have a child if you have a formula fed child or had a formula fed child you definitely like definitely need to look into high fructose corn syrup and i'm going to put everything down below just for you to do your own research which is what i really advocate for because just don't listen to what i'm saying i want you to go out and do your own research and do your own investigation because I want you to be empowered with the knowledge that you learn, not just taking it from my mouth or whoever's mouth. I want you to do your own research. So back to what I was saying, formula is really hard for them to digest. They have no clue how to digest it. They're born premature. They don't have the digestive capabilities. They don't have the enzymes. Infants already have low enzymes or a lack of enzymes in general but if a child is born premature they have even more um, depleted enzymes in their body so keep this in mind formula has now commercial brands i want to put that out there Enfamil, isomil similac nestle good start they all sweeten their formulas with high fructose corn syrup high fructose corn syrup is toxic it is contaminated with mercury and it is also made with genetically modified organisms gmo corn um, and those are all very toxic especially for a vulnerable immature being they can't digest they have no way or form of actually filtering out the toxic ingredients that are in commercial brands of formula like the corn syrup like the mercury and they have no idea what to do with this stuff so this can end up getting accumulated in their tissues in their organs in their cells and corn syrup is genetically modified and genetically modified anything is heavily sprayed with pesticides heavily sprayed okay but anyways i'm getting off topic with that i will definitely be diving into formula and breastfeeding in a video later on but I'm completely getting off topic because I'm just so passionate about formula and formula fed babies because I had a formula fed baby and I knew absolutely nothing. So that's why I'm so passionate in sharing that information with you guys, but that's besides the point. So these, these sugars in formula are nowhere close to breast milk sugars. 
these sugars are more likely to feed the bad bacteria in the body and end up helping them flourish and grow, which can lead to a ton of digestive issues for baby. How do you know there is a digestive issue? Well, these are the symptoms. Food allergies, food intolerances, rashes, bloating, colic, diarrhea, or constipation. Those are all really big and clear signs that there is some type of digestive disturbance something's wrong and this is our job as parents or if you are working with a practitioner who focuses on infant digestion or infant wellness they will also tell you that these are really big indicators that something is wrong however i do want to throw out there that these symptoms are not the only indicator of something going on this can also be an indicator that there is something irritated that irritating the digestive tract this is also an indicator that um there may be not enough bacteria, good bacteria, probiotics in the digestive tract, and it can also be symptoms of a leaky gut. But some, but most of the time, they all go hand in hand together. What the heck do you do when all of this is going on? Well, if mom has taken antibiotics, if mom has had a C-section, which where she is taking antibiotics, mom is definitely gonna have to take probiotics because she may not also feel well too, but is not really noticing because, well, she's probably super sleep deprived at this point if she has a newborn baby and not really focusing on herself she's probably more busy trying to nourish her baby opposed to nourishing herself so probiotics mama take probiotics please and for a baby please give them probiotics too you can do oral probiotics which you can either drop it into their mouth you can drop it onto the nipple you can drop it onto the nipple of the bottle there are also powdered probiotics as well that you can put in your baby's uh, bottle if you're formula feeding or pumping if you want to learn more about probiotics you can check out my instagram at noble baby wellness i can't even remember my instagram if you want any more resources on probiotics check out my instagram at noble baby wellness where i have a free pdf that you can save and use and learn more about probiotics all right guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to like this video and if you have any friends or family who are moms moms to be send and share this video to them all right see you